right, in this tutorial we are going to be taking a look at how to set up a letter and use a data file to do a mail merge inside of Microsoft Publisher. All right, we're gonna be setting this up to be used with windowed envelopes. So if you've ever gotten a piece of uh, generic mail in the mail and you've seen it's got a windowed envelope and the address shows up, uh, that has been done in an automatic folder which inserts it into the envelope and the address shows up in the window. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that and how we've set up the page is I've opened a new publisher file and um, I've gone over to page design and into the margins and we've done some custom margins one inch from the left and a half inch from the top, bottom, and the right. Now we've already got a letter um, all put together. This was a real letter but I've changed a few things in it just so uh, yeah, yeah, just for anonymity, I guess you could say. Um, changed up a few things there. And we've also done the same thing to our data file. So this was a real letter, but it's not anymore. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to put some guides on the page so we know where to drop the address and where to drop the letter. So I've already done some measuring, and the best place to put our address is two and one quarter inches from the top of the page. This is so that when the letter's folded, the address shows up inside of that window of the envelope. Um, and the window is usually a little over an inch tall. So we're gonna basically make this one inch and I've just dragged the guides. I'm clicking and dragging off of the top ruler if you've not done that before. And we want the top of our letter to start one inch below that or maybe even three quarters. We'd go three quarters of an inch just so that uh, the letter does not end up showing up uh, or the name dear whoever does not end up showing up in the window. We want to give some ample space here. So this is where the address is going to go and the letter is going to start down here. Let's go ahead and move the letter into place. There we go. And notice that it just says dear and it doesn't say who it's going to. That's because we're going to use our data file to get the person's name. So not only are we doing a mail merge, but we're also merging some data. And using this method, you can actually merge any pieces of data anywhere throughout this letter if you wanted to. All right, let's jump right in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump over here to mailings. We're gonna go to mail merge. We're gonna click the little arrow pointing down and do step-by-step -step mail merge wizard. And then over here on the right, we, get, we got this new box that just showed up. Um, we're going to say create or connect to a recipient list. And we've already got a list. And it is... Uh, screen capture. There we go. So we can see we have a mailing list.csv. This is a comma delimited file that was created in Microsoft Excel. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to indicate that it is a comma separated and that the first row of data contains the column headers. So there we go. We can see that the headers in that, um, in that data source is L name, F name, or last name, first name, that's what that stands for, city, state, zip, and the street. All right, so we'll go ahead and say okay. Now nothing has happened yet but we'll notice that the mail merge stuff over here on the right hand side has changed and we've now got some other uh, yeah we've got those those names for each one of those columns are over here let's take a look at the data file real quick since we're actually using that data file it is uh, only gonna let us open it um, as a read-only that's okay and so here's that, here's that data file. We can see that we've got first name, last name, street, city, state, and a zip. And you could add any other number of columns that you wanted to with specific data that you wanted to merge into your letter. So uh, if you were talking about specific numbers that people have given maybe to your organization, you can have their number over there and you can actually put that as data right into your file. But we're not gonna get into that today. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close out of that. 
We don't need to save it. All right, so what we're going to do is, is we're actually going to put in an address block. So we're going to click on address block, and already it is picking up on a little bit of the address, but not everything is matching. It's figured out what the first name and last name is, um, but for some reason it's not pulling the street address. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to click this match fields button and it's going to show us that it has matched F name to first name, L name to last name, but under address one it's saying not matched. So we can click that and say, hey, that's the street is what that's going to match up with. And then we've got city, state, and postal code or zip are matching up just fine. So we'll go ahead and say OK and we'll notice now that we got a nice little address block and if we wanted to we can jump through and we can see that each person is in there so we'll go ahead and say OK and then that address block is currently it just dropped it in the middle of the page so we're gonna pull that up stretch this across the page and now here's our address block now right now it's 10 point font we can jump that up to 11. I also want to go into the paragraph settings and make sure that after paragraphs is set to zero and space between lines is set to one. You'll see why here in just a minute. We'll say OK. Now we're going to come down to where it says dear and we're going to use F name and a comma. And now when we merge this file together or go to print it, the person's name is going to show up here. All right, let's take a look real quick at the preview. So we're going to say next, create a merged publication. We're going to go up here to print preview. And we can now see that the person's address is in there and we have dear Jasmine. It's going to Jasmine's surname. Everything is set up really nice and now this address is going to show up once it's folded and inserted it's going to show up inside of the window of the envelope I think we could probably make that a little bit larger right now uh, we have got 11 point Arial down here and I would match the font so I would go with 11 point Arial for the address block as well if that makes sense whoops I didn't want to move that I just wanted to select it and make sure we got it, and we did. All right, so now let's take a look at that print preview one more time, and now we can see that the fonts look the same. And that's, that's just good design. All right, let's go ahead and merge these files. So now that we're here, we can say merge to a new publication. Takes a second, and depending on how big your list is, uh, you will now get all the individual pages so if there was something you needed to change on an individual letter, you could now drop in and change it before you print it. But the reason I did this is because I want to save it down to a PDF. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and say File, Save As. We'll browse out to our screen capture folder. There we go. And we'll say uh, Letters, ready for printing. All right, and there we go. Oh, I wanted to save it as a PDF, right? So file, save as. We're going to go ahead and do it in the screen capture folder again. This time I'm going to save it as a PDF, and we'll say save, and here we go. Now we have the PDF with all of those letters. Awesome. If you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them in the comments below. If you have any questions about how to use Microsoft Publisher, it doesn't have to be for mail merge or anything else, just anything you're trying to do inside of Microsoft Publisher, let me know in the comments below and I will get a tutorial up as soon as I can. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.